This episode, we set ourselves a challenge. What happens when you book a last minute, cheap as possible cruise? Because there's lots of deals out there, but are any of them any good? Especially as most of the deals are on old, out of date cruise ships. So how did it go and should you do the same? Would it be one of our better decisions or did we regret every single minute of it? Oh no. Okay, that drawer doesn't really open. When you open the cupboard, the drawers don't work, they don't slide. When you open anything, it drops out. Good, solid 1999 stuff. Let's find out. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. My name is Bill and it's great to have you along with us. This edition of the Cruise Guide, we wanted to mix things up a bit because you can't always go on the newest, shiniest and best ship out there, can you? As is often the way, one of the reasons why it was a deal is because we were sailing out of season when it's a little bit colder. Whoa, it's bracing this morning. So we absolutely went for broke here, taking three risks that could absolutely go wrong. Cheap cruise, old ship, and potentially freezing. Who did we sail with? Well, there were several options, but we chose Celebrity and their 24-year-old ship, the Infinity. Because just a few weeks ago, we were on their newest flagship, the Ascent. So by doing the two differing cruises virtually back to back, everything was fresh in our mind and we could really focus on what the differences are. Now, whilst we chose Celebrity, our findings should be applicable to most cruise lines because old ships share most of the common characteristics no matter who owns them. So let's see how it went, remembering our mission. Can old, cheap ships give an enjoyable experience? First off, we'll show you the ship and what facilities it has. We're going to be looking at it from top to bottom, no stone unturned. As we go round, we'll show you any pitfalls, can you still have fun at night, and what's on offer. So we won't hold back, we weren't paid for this review, and we'll be as honest as we can. Here we go, this is day one, arriving at the dock, ready to embark the Celebrity Infinity. We were boarding in Athens, Greece. Here we go, day one, embarkation, Celebrity Infinity. How's the ship looking from the outside? Actually, well, bearing in mind the age of the ship, it's looking in pretty good condition. I tell you what, it's a strange shape, the Infinity. Shall I tell you why? You're looking at the ship, looking at the ship, fairly standard, fairly standard, fairly standard, fairly standard, fairly standard. And then suddenly, it's almost as if they just chopped off the end. They suddenly ran out of budget, or ran out of money, or ran out of paper. Do you see what I mean? Suddenly, it just stops. Like, it got to the fold, it got to the crease in the paper, and there was no more. There. You feel like there should be a bit more there. Straight line. Strange, isn't it? Deck cleaning squad in operation. Out with the jet hoses. Has to be said, some of these statues on the ship are a bit odd. Okay, here we are, embarkation day. What are our expectations? 24 year old ship. Do we think the room is going to look good or dated? Let's find out. Welcome to 1999, very nearly, well, 2000. And we've got orangey brown furniture and of course, four mica walls and a television from 1999. Bill, you know what is data? Look at the switches and you can tell it's data because it has no USB. Well, definitely no USB and almost Bakelite switches. And the thing is, and the age of a ship really is the USB ports, isn't it? A few Dip Art Deco touches. <laughs> Dipstick. A dipstick. <laughs> yes, it is very clean. It's clean, but it's just... It's the just thing old. is, it's just old it, is a it, it is a 20-year-old ship. It is a little bit dated. We were on the sister ship to this, the Summit, in 2003. So precisely 21 years ago, we were on the it's sister ship. a long time, isn't it? And it looks like it's almost the same furnishings. There's no digital panel. It's all analogue. Yes. I'm almost surprised there was a card key. I was expecting an old-fashioned metal key. But the older ships did have luggage space. Look at that, you see? That's actually quite generous by today's cruise standards. The hangers are a bit chewed up, but they are lots of... Chewed up? 
Oh, I see, yes. Actually, for a cabin that's towards the cheaper end of the offering, the space isn't bad. What does the bathroom look like? Let's have a look. Ah. Ah, there we are. That does feel a little bit like a hospital light, would you say? Having just come off the ascent, compared to the other edge class of ships. This is 1970s. It is. I feel like we're sort of in one of these hospital ships. We could be in the Navy, actually. I think I've been on board Navy ships, which look rather similar to this. Yeah. But the other thing to note is, of course, it is a shower curtain, not glass. And, it's not well, dark here, there's no light. No light in this part of the shower. Is the bed comfortable? Give it a bed test. It's just a bit hard. Well, there's no give, that's it. Is there no give? I know. Okay, that drawer doesn't really open. That drawer does. That one. When you open the cupboard, the drawers don't work. They don't slide. When you open anything, it drops out. Good, solid 1999 stuff. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up as it lets us know we're on the right track and we'll try to put out more of this type of material. Right, we're about to go around the ship and show you feature by feature, including bars and restaurants and the theatre. Before that, let's have a quick peep at the outside decks and the pool area. Right, here we go. Right at the top of the ship, the pool area. As always, we'll be showing you as many angles and viewpoints as we can, so you can really imagine you're there right along with us. And I have to say, the pool in the deck area is one of the shining beacons of these older style of cruise ships. Plenty of room for you to set yourself out for the day. And here on the Affinity, there are two pool areas surrounded by lots of lounging areas. Because on modern ships, there often isn't enough deck space, and there definitely is here on these older ships. And don't forget the capacity for the Celebrity Infinity and many of the ships of this era is 2,000 passengers, not the 6,000 you get on ships today. So far less people to scramble for the same spot. You'll find your normal facilities, such as jacuzzis, more than enough of them. And there's an elevated jogging track. And right at the rear, you'll find a roof garden. In the case of the Infinity, it's become an outdoor cinema space. Early season with us, so plenty of room. And we sat for a moment or two. If you've been on a Celebrity Edge class of ships, you'll partially recognize this setup. But it's a bit more basic here than what the latest Edge class ships have. Right, let's now pop inside and see what there is to do to amuse you. Let's start off with one of our favorites right at the top of the ship, the Constellation Lounge. And I tell you what, there are some things that older ships do much better than the newer ones of today. And you're looking at it, the Observation Lounge. Very popular back in the day, they are generally perched up high with great wraparound views. You try and find an observation bar with a view on newer cruise ships that are free. Because mostly they're not, they are behind a paywall. Meaning you have to be a sweet guest or a spa cabin but older ships give access to all. One point to the older cruise ships. And on some evenings, there were some late night, slightly risque shows, which got in the crowds. So far, so good for older ships, acquitting themselves well. Another lively spot on board the Infinity. Celebrity is well known for their martini bar. It's one of their features. This one is clustered right in the center of the ship by the main atrium. During the evenings, the atrium becomes a multi-purpose venue with live music, coffees, and drinks all sharing the area. And at 8 p.m., the martini bar presents a little show.
Coming up in a moment, we'll show you the food offerings aboard. It does smell quite gamey. It does smell very ducky. Very, very ducky. Is that is ducky a word? Does, but first, let's take a little toddle along to the theatre, because I think once again, on older ships, it's really rather good. And here we go on the Infinity. And as you can see, back in the day, they were a far more spacious affair. What do I mean by that? In the older ships, you could really stretch yourself out, oodles of legroom, and you get a lit drinks table. In fact, waiters come round and serve you. It's more of a show lounge feel. Compare that to the new ships of today, where it's much tighter, more akin to going to a cinema. The older ships got this far more right. As for the shows and entertainment we had, it was mostly on par with what you would expect. The normal song and dance routines by ship's performers and invited guests. Incidentally, this cruise, we were on a beautiful Mediterranean route going around some gorgeous ports of call in Greece, Turkey and Cyprus, taking in ancient wonders and fabulously cute villages and cities, including the majestic Athens. Shortly, we'll be putting out a separate dedicated video covering what we saw. So remember to be subscribed to our channel so you know when those come out. Ah, we're outside the palace, where there's a ceremonial march. Right, let's now take a look at food. We'll start with the main dining room, and then a little later in the video, we'll show you the speciality restaurants and the buffet. Here we go, on the Affinity, the main dining room is called the Trillis, and it's a two-story affair. Here it is empty, in a moment we'll show you the food. Decor and layout is very typical of a 1990s and 2000s ship. Sweeping designs, feature ceiling lighting, and a swirling staircase that never gets used anymore as there's a table right at the bottom. Okay, let's now show you the trellis at various times of the day and why not start with breakfast? Ah, oh, there's a tempting looking, tempting looking plate of pastries. Look at now, are you avoiding that plate, tray? Are you, are you, sure? are you ignoring that tray? Are you imagining it's, it's difficult, not there? but you just have to. You mean that tray of pastries that's right there? You're pretending it's not there. Not there. All oh, right, now what takes our fancy? Oh, I spot incoming pastries. You have a telescopic view for pastries. Wow. Now that's a full tray. Just a light breakfast this end, just to get the day started. Keep the walk from the door before we head out. Doesn't that look colourful? A frittata. Orange. Decoration. Garnish. Very nice one. One parsley. Eggs test. Pick one. Yes, we have, we have to do an eggs benedict test on the eggs because this is the real check on look at that oozing. Don't you feel that should be in a good Housekeeping good cookbook, there they are. Oozing. Eggs perfect. So, main dining room breakfast, pretty good, pretty reliable. We'll show you the other meals throughout the day a bit later in this video, but first, we thought it was useful and quite fun to show you a typical day aboard the ship. This gives you a feel for not just food, but also activities. So here's a page from our video diary, taken over one 24-hour period. Oh, avoided that tray of pastries. It's so hard, isn't it, to say no thank you? Well, nice bright spot for breakfast. Have you noticed something just behind your chair? No, look down. Look down. There. What? I mean, I walked straight from the table and didn't realise. Yes, there is a little porthole, this time down to the ground. How many times have you walked over that and never noticed that? There's a couple. I wonder how many people come into this buffet restaurant and never notice. This one's right over the lifeboats. There we are. Maybe they could put a fireman's pole in down there. If it's lifeboat day, or, you know, if worst comes to worst, you need to evacuate, you could go straight down to the lifeboats. 
Let's have a look at breakfast, shall we? We got a nice pastry section. Cereals. Alrighty, let's see what we got. We got some fried bread, some beans and mushrooms. Thousands of calories here, literally. We got bacon, sausages, hash browns. And there's an Asian section tucked in here with porridge, congee, and something else that I've got absolutely no idea what it is. Now this is the egg station, and it's really rather good. And they can whip you up an Eggs Benedict. In fact, eggs anyway. Okay, away from all this temptation, there's no food out here. It's early morning exercises. Now older ships like this don't do aqua parks and go-kart tracks and assault courses. But there's good old-fashioned deck activities. Wiggle your hips, sashay along the deck. It's all very invigorating in this sea air. It's almost flower power, 60s style. In and out again. Hey, we haven't been to the gym yet. Should we trot along there and see what it looks like? See if we can find my wife. Through the spa and you'll find the gym right at the front. Oh, there she is. I've seen her. She's working out hard. There you go. Hello. Crunches. Looking as colourful as ever. How's it going? Give us a debrief. What do you think of the gym? I think for a small sized ship, this gym is quite comprehensive. It has all the things that you need. There is a lot of treadmills. I counted 13. A lot of strength training equipment. Huge place for workout. There's a lot of little, little areas where you can do your stretching. So for a ship gym, it's really good. And right next to the pool area, on deck 10, is the Slarium, the indoor sunbathing and lounging section of the ship. It's almost like an orangery or a huge glass house or conservatory. I almost feel like playing Hawaiian music to fit the theme. But hang on. Now you might be saying to yourself, shouldn't a Slarium be a haven of calm and peace and quiet and all things relaxing? But what do we hear? What is that noise? It sounds like a perpetual block brain, doesn't it? Um, you'd like to think you were coming here for a quiet thalasso session, but yeah. fantastic having a thalasso pool if you could actually hear yourself think. And you think it's going to stop, and it doesn't stop. Okay, not quite as relaxing as hoped. How about a poolside massage? Elba? Yeah. You've got magic fingers, Thelma. Oh, and all those magic fingers, magic fingers. Am I? I am Ted, can you tell? Do you know what I do not I think he's just enjoying the massage and pretending to listen to the sales pitch. In the meantime, he's going through some pummeling. You're doing an amazing job there, Thelma. Thank you. You are very good. You almost go to sleep this very second. Okay, so far we haven't showed you much of the dinner in the main dining room. How would we find it? Remembering that this was a cheap, last-minute cruise. To make back some of that money from the discount they gave us, would Celebrity be holding back on the quality? Would we notice any difference? Let's see, in we go and we'll show you a sample of dinners over the course of the entire cruise in fairly quick succession so you can get a feel for it. Okay, another evening, another bunch of fun to be had in the main dining room. Big bright blue dome in here. It's a hallmark of turn of the century ship design. I feel like there's a UFO about to descend upon the dining room. Well, that's a very nice appetizer there. We have chicken saltim boca. Ah, incoming, your old favourite. We got snails, we got escargot. Here we go, looking green and bottom lawn as ever. I'm going to have to order it once, just for comparison purposes. It's your benchmark test this for celebrity, isn't it? Looks a bit more liquidy to me, but... Actually, that's pretty good. Is it? Yeah. And for myself, we've got very medium rare aged prime rib. 
That looks quite pretty. What did you order there? See it's salmon. Yes. With real vegetable. Martina, why not? Look at that. Totally circular. Little blob of vanilla ice cream on top. Only about 21 calories. To share. What have you got on your plate, Bill? I tell you what, this short rib beef is very good. Look, it sort of falls apart, which is the whole idea. They've obviously been slow roasting that since last month, probably. Falls apart. For those who haven't got any teeth, this is the one you should get. Okay. Uh, look at that beef carpaccio. That is very thinly sliced. If you were to hold that up sideways, I don't think we'd see it. With a token shaving of peas. Yes. There we go. Shrimp cocktail with quite a lot of sauce. How many shrimps have you got? I think there's three shrimps. Three. You've counted, have you? Have you done a stock take? An audit on it? Lava cake with vanilla ice cream and it looks like caramelized banana. We do the lava test. Ooze. Molten lava. Oh. Well, sort of oozing. Oozing-ish. There, there. Yeah, a, little, a little bit of okay. oozing. Suddenly the main dining room gets just that little bit busier when lobster is in the offing. Although times have changed. It's not like you can get unlimited lobster anymore. The first one comes free of charge. The second and subsequent ones are an additional cost. It's incoming lobster. Now, how much butter would you like? The whole bowl, basically. Look at that. Duck a orange, a staple of the 1970s and 1980s. I feel like I'm in a time machine. duck is on your plate? It is a huge portion of duck, isn't it? You know this duck smells very ducky, does it? I mean, I'm not sure whether there's a word. It does smell quite damey. It does smell very ducky. Maybe aged duck. It was caught a few weeks ago and it's now been strung up in the engine room for the last few days. I have to say, despite it being a last-minute cut-price cruise, we didn't detect any lowering of standards by celebrity. The evening meals in the main dining room were really very good, keeping up with celebrity's tradition of good cuisine. But we did have one major gripe with the main dining room, and we'll come on to that at the end of the video in our summary. First though, let's see if these older ships can still entertain you throughout the night. And where's the action? Right up top at the Constellation Lounge. And we found ourselves at the Full Moon Party, which got progressively risque as the night wore on. Some people watching were getting really rather hot under the collar. Old ships can still be young at heart. Nobody was falling asleep that night, I can tell you. It's almost midnight. Should we check the almost midnight buffet, see what's on offer? It's tucked right at the very, 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 very back of the buffet. All right, well, we've got a couple of pizzas still going strong. But let's see what else is on here, right at the back of the back of the back of the ship. We've got a little bit of salad. It's a strange midnight offering, but why not? Why not be healthy at midnight? And we have some very green desserts. We have some very dinky looking sandwiches. I have a challenge for you on the almost midnight buffet. They have these canopies, which understandably are for health reasons, but you do need to be a circus performer to get all of the way underneath there. Look, you see, look, it's crazy. My breath and get one. I lean on that and get some fruit. I mean, that's the best thing I can yeah. do. Absolutely useless to get. In the meantime, <laughs> it's taking me forever because there's one. Tiny tongs. I think you need 24 inch tongs. And after eating unnecessarily late into the night, we took a stroll around the ship. Just before midnight, to check it was all still there. I do like to take a late night amble around the deck. There's always lots to see, and it's quite colourful. Helps clear the mind before you hit the mattress. Careful not to trip up over any number of obstructions. By the way, if you think you're a candidate for smaller cruise ships, 
and enjoy the experience they offer, then please keep an eye out for an upcoming cruise series on our channel. We'll be embarking on a small ship luxury version in a few months, where we put under the microscope what it's like on a ship that's small and boutique, but it isn't fearfully expensive and covers that ground where people are looking for luxury, but not at an exorbitant cost. Look out for that coming soon. Still to come, our final verdict on whether picking a cheap last-minute cruise was a good idea, but early on we mentioned that we'd been on the sister ship, the Summit, 23 years ago. Well, I dug out my old archive footage to see what had changed between then and now. Have there been any renovations, any updates, any change to this Millennium class of ship since 2003? Let's take a peep. Here we go, our cruise to Alaska. You'll have to excuse the video quality. This is the best I could eke out from those old VHS tapes. And look at this, guess what? The pool deck hasn't changed at all since that time. See, it's almost identical. Here is then and now. Likewise, the jacuzzis, the bar, all there then, all there now. And up front, one of our favorite places, this time the Constellation Lounge, almost identical. 23 years has stood still, as has the solarium, though I don't remember it being as noisy. Slightly different statues, but by and large, very similar. But there's no gurgling noise in 2003. How bliss. But there was more vegetation and decoration. Now here's one change. They had a botanical garden back then, where they served afternoon tea. Don't do that anymore. What on earth happened to the botanical garden? It's certainly not on the ship now and an internet cafe with my wife staring at a 2003 screen with a great view outside. It was a cold cruise that time, I remember, even though it was July. Hot chocolate and brandy on deck hit the spot. So as you can see, the Millennium class of ships looking remarkably similar to now. So always interesting to see old cruise footage. Now I do have a huge back catalogue of cruises going back 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And if you'd like me to create a series of cruising from yesteryear showing some of this back catalogue footage, please do let me know in the comments box below and I might start putting some of it out. Right, it's come to that part of the video where we summarise it all, go through the good and bad points and decide whether we think cruising on old, cheaper ships really is a good idea when there are so many brand spanking new ships out there that you could easily pick instead. So the original premise of this video is can you pick a cheap last minute cruise potentially out of season and still have fun? And the answer is absolutely yes, but with a few provisos. So let's go through these one by one. First off, one of the reasons cruises can be cheap is that they're either at the beginning or end of the year out of season. In our instance, we went to the Mediterranean and it was late March. Our cruise was approximately half the price of going just a few weeks later. Yes, the weather was a little bit cool, but there were almost no crowds at any of the attractions. Shopkeepers and restaurants were delighted to see you, and it took only half the time to get around any of the attractions, which are way more busy in the peak season. So an absolute win on going out of season. And we will be bringing out a series of videos shortly showing you all of the delightful Mediterranean ports we visited. So watch out for that one. Secondly, older ships have quirks and have clearly seen better days. Are you prepared to be on a ship which is not at its prime anymore? Next up is the character between the older ships and the newer ships. And as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be bringing out a video dedicated to exactly that, in this case, celebrity, the older ships versus their new edge class. And there are big differences. And one of the more obvious ones, if you're into dining, is the speciality restaurants on the older ships versus the new. Now, we mentioned earlier we got a little bit grumpy with the main dining room, and I'll tell you now the reason why. Because the app would not allow you to make a reservation throughout the evening. There was only one time, 5.30 p.m., that the app allowed you to book. The rest of the time, anybody on any time dining apart from 5.30, you had to show up and take your turn in the queue. And we did end up getting quite frustrated because it was needless. We would often arrive and we were told to wait 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour on some occasions for a table to come up, only to find out that once we arrived in the dining room, 
There were oodles of tables available, loads of space. Everybody, for some reason, had just been kept waiting outside, and we never found out why. And it's a shame, because the food inside the main dining room is excellent, but you're going to take the edge off it if you have to wait an hour to get in. So in the final analysis, would I pick one of these older ships? In fact, actually, I would rephrase that question. It's more about the case of what size of ship and then what age, because for us, a mid-sized ship is really the sweet spot. We don't enjoy the five or 6,000 passenger ships. We really prefer those that are two to 3,000 because we feel they're more personable, they're easier to get around, and they're not so noisy. Having then selected mid-size, what age of ship? If you're looking for a cruise which is very relaxed, quite quiet, not going to be too noisy, probably very few children aboard because there aren't the roller coasters, there aren't the fast rides. If you're just looking for a very quiet, chilled experience, and yes, these older mid-class ships are for you. If not, if you're looking for just a scintilla more action, a little bit more activity, then quite possibly you want one of the more modern mid-class size of ships. I do hope this has been useful to you. We fully recognise that everybody has a different opinion. This is just ours. If you've got any thoughts or comments or questions, please do jot them down in the comments box. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us on the Ritzy Travel Guide. It's been an absolute pleasure having you along with us. So many videos coming up in the pipeline over coming weeks and months. We hope you'll join us in those. In the meantime, you can watch some videos here and you can watch some videos here. And we'll see you in those.